Hey, this is Jamie from Stillmeyer Games, and today I'm going to talk about my favorite small box games for big gatherings. I have a few kind of big group friend gatherings coming up in the near future, and one big family reunion coming up this summer as well. And I like to bring um, a variety of games to these types of events, but if I'm flying, if I'm not driving, if I'm driving I can put anything in the car, but if I'm flying I need to fit smaller box games into my suitcase. And I want those to be games, especially for um, when, the, when these gatherings aren't with a lot of other gamers or people who are experienced gamers. I like to pick games that are very easy to teach, um, that uh, that are entertaining for those who don't want to play, but they're kind of in the area. And also, especially for these types of gatherings where anything can happen at any moment, games that are easy to pick up and, and stop playing at any given time, which I have a separate video for that that I'll link to in the comments below. Um, also, as much as I want to include two-player games in this on this list, I decided not to because oftentimes at these gatherings, if I'm just one-on-one -on -one with someone else, then we're probably just having a conversation rather than actually playing a game. So I wanted to pick games that play at higher player counts, typically four plus players. So um, a bunch of honorable mentions here from ambassadors who contributed their thoughts. I have Archaeology, Arboretum, Bites, Cartographers, Coup, Ganshan Clever, Just One, Oh My Goods, One Night Ultimate Werewolf, Point Salad, Shards of Infinity, Shipwreck, Arcana, Silver and Gold, Sprawlopolis, Tussie Mussie, Star Realms, The Resistance, Tiny Epic Galaxies, Welcome to, Skull King, Herbaceous, and Abandon All Artichokes. And I had a few games that are great. I think they, I think they would go over great. These are games that I definitely would travel with to these gatherings if I was driving, but I determined their boxes were just a little bit too big for me to really put them in my suitcase. Feel free to debate that. I understand if you disagree with that. Maybe you have a bigger suitcase than I do. Um, but they are Rolling Realms, which is kind of the smallest Stillmeyer game, but it works really well, scales up really well. I will probably be bringing that to my family reunion this summer anyway. Uh, Just One, I determined to be slightly too big. Codenames, which has worked out great at family reunions. Mysterium Park, which I think is very entertaining for everyone involved. Uh, Ink and Gold, great push your luck game. The Resistance Avalon, uh, the Resistance has gone on, go, gone over very well with my family reunion group. And most recently, Long Shot the Dice Game, which I have over here because I'm going to do a video about it very soon. But really, I think that's a, that's a great game. So let's jump into the top 10 now, starting with The Crew. So this is one of the more recent games on the list. The Crew is a cooperative trick-taking game that plays probably best from three to five players. It does have a two-player mode, at least in this version of The Crew, but it plays from three to five players. And the thing that I love about The Crew, and this will be a, a slight theme on a couple games on this list, is how well it ramps up. Um, it starts off with a very simple mission that doesn't take very long. You're just trying to accomplish one task. And if you accomplish that mission together, working with the other players, I think cooperative games are generally pretty good in this type of atmosphere. Um, if, you, if you complete that, that task, then you can decide to do a slightly more difficult task or to stop playing. And so in playing in kind of little micro, micro doses uh, with, these, with this style of ramping up game works really, really well. And uh, that's why I'm excited to bring it to my family reunion and see how it goes. And it does have that feeling of, let's play one more game. Let's do one more. Whether we win or, or whether we uh, succeed or fail, it's fun to continue and try one more mission in the crew. So I'm going to be bringing that one this summer. That's the crew at number 10. At number 9, we have one of the bigger box games on this list, even though it is a tiny box, and that is Fantasy Realms. I've heard there's actually a new version of this coming out soon, but I love the original. I loved it enough to design a game with a similar mechanism in Red Rising. Fantasy Realms is a game where you are given a hand of cards at the beginning of the game, a random hand of cards, and the entire game is you crafting that hand of cards so you score the most points from it at the end of the game. It is, uh, so I didn't pick, I picked very simple games for this list because I wanted them to be really easy to teach. I'm thinking mostly about this family reunion. Um, but, and Fantasy Realm is actually probably on the little bit of the heavier end of that, even though it is not a heavy game, because you are trying to figure out all these combinations, these combos that you're trying to build. If I have this card, maybe it, it'll score me more points for these two other cards, and the points ramp way up. Now, this is a game where you might be scoring 200, 300 points. But I wanted a game that had that a little bit of a heavier feel to it, even though I, I know Fantasy Realms is not a heavy game, but it has a heavier feel for people who aren't gamers with that points and combo system. Um, so I wanted a game like that on this list, one that, uh, that those of us at the family reunion who play a lot of games can get really into and play a couple games of and have that combo-tastic feel. That's Fantasy Realms at number nine. 
At number eight, I put Deep Sea Adventure. Again, I put this one a little bit lower on the list because it's a slightly more complex to explain, even though this is a wonderful push your luck game where you can just start playing essentially and say, okay, this is what you do on your turn. And now you understand how the game works after you've actually taken a turn. But as a push your luck game where you're diving down um, in to pick up some treasures and trying to get back up to your submarine, your ship, um, before everyone collectively runs out of air. So it's this uh, nice competitive game where you are cooperatively sharing one resource. That is, that is the air in the game. I love that mechanism in general. Um, but I also love that in Deep Sea Adventure, if you fail in one of the first two dives, that's okay. You're still in the game. You can still go down deeper and collect better stuff on the third and final dive and actually still have a chance at winning. So even though you have valid choices early in the game and you, and you make important decisions early in the game, um, you still feel like you're in it even later in the game. And that's great for this type of environment. And plus this one's fun to watch because it has that push your luck feel. So I've put Deep Sea Adventure as a tiny little box. Oink Games makes tiny boxes at number eight on this list. At number seven, I have Love Letter. Love Letter is a game that I've fallen in and out of love with. I think early on, I, I, I didn't really admire what it was, but I've come to really appreciate um, how Love Letter makes you think about what you have in hand, which of the two cards you're going to play, and what other cards the other players may have. And the stakes are so low in, lo in Love Letter because uh, you can easily just play a round of the game and be over and done with it and have a slight sense of winning something. Or you can play multiple rounds. If you're And if you're out of one round, you know, you're, gonna, you're probably going to play another round and, you'll play, and have a, another chance at winning. So I really like that, how quick and, and light and fun it is, but it still has some great decision points. And I love the theme of Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit. So I like this particular version of Love Letter. I think this one works really well in this type of this type of environment. And it is such a small box. I even have a bag version of this too that's even smaller that I'll fit into my suitcase. So that is The Hobbit Love Letter at number seven. At number six, I have my second Oink game of the list. I, I didn't put Scout on this list. I, I thought about it, but I don't own it. I actually only picked games that I own for this particular list. And this one I chose A Fake Artist Goes to New York. This is the only party game on the list, even though I do love party games in this environment, games like Telestrations, Just One, but, uh, but they have bigger boxes. And so I chose the smallest box of all the party games that I own, A Fake Artist Goes to New York. In, in this game, um, there's going to be a, a player who writes down a word on a bunch of tiny little whiteboards and they pass those over, they, they mix them up so they don't know who is getting which of those whiteboards. And crucially, one, they'll leave one of those little whiteboards blank. And so every player will get a whiteboard, one of these tiny little whiteboards, and most players will see what the word is and one player won't know. They are the fake artist. And then collectively, players will draw a picture adding like a little touch to the picture in a different colored pen. And uh, the job of the players is, is to determine which player is the one who doesn't actually know what they are drawing, because they're all drawing collectively the same thing. It's a really fun game. It has resulted in some, some very funny moments um, in my experience from playing it and some really great group moments um, that, have, that have emerged from playing A Fake Artist Goes to New York. And I look forward to playing this this summer. That's A Fake Artist Goes to New York at number six. At number five is Wizard. Here we go. Um, there's a very close debate for me between this and Skull King, but right now I'm preferring Wizard, so I put Wizard on the list. Both of these games are wonderful trick-taking games that, again, like the crew, ramp up really well. So in Wizard, you each start with a one-card hand, and you are bidding before you start. You're declaring how many hands you think you will win. And if you are correct, if you guess that number correctly and actually execute it during that round, you get some points. And then you do it again, but you do it with two a two card hand and then a three card hand. And really you can stop at any time, but I think it's best to start a game of wizard by saying, we're gonna play X number of rounds and see how we score at the end of that period of time. But I love how it ramps up for the teaching. It's a really satisfying game. And I think games like this, trick taking, including the, the crew, are, are great for, um, I think of my family reunion crowd, there's some older people in this crowd, my aunts and uncles, and they know trick-taking games pretty well, but they don't know modern trick-taking games or more modern trick-taking games like Wizard and the crew. And so they're familiar with the mechanism, but they, I think they'll enjoy the twist on it. So I really look forward to playing this this summer with my aunts and uncles at the beach. That is Wizard at number five. One of my favorite mechanisms is I Cut You Choose, and that is what Sunday Split is all about. This is my number four favorite game, small box game to bring to a big gathering. In Sunday Split, 
Uh, each player takes turns taking a bunch of cards. I believe it's 13 cards. It might scale by player count. And they divide them into a number of stacks equal to the number of players. And some of those cards are going to be face up and a few of them will be face down, depending on what you choose there. And then each other player around the table will choose one of those stacks based on what they can see. And they'll score, mostly they'll score some points uh, at the end of the game. They're working towards scoring points. But some of the cards are negative points. Like there's a broccoli card, a few broccoli cards in here that are worth negative three points because you don't want broccoli in a Sunday. Um, and I love, I love this face up, face down mechanism in, in, in Sunday Split. Because you can put fa cards face down if they're bad um, and make other players think, okay, you've, put, you've disguised some bad cards in here. But ultimately, you were, even though you were the one splitting, you were also waiting to take the last pile that you put at the table. There are five players, and I, it's my turn. I'm going to put five piles on the table, so I get the last one. So I might hide some, I might pretend to have hidden some bad stuff on the face down cards, while, whereas I really put some good stuff there, and I get it at the end of the round. Um, yeah, it's just, it's a wonderful eye cut you choose game. I really enjoy this. It's very easy to teach and it's colorful. It looks great on the table. I would definitely look forward to sharing this this summer with my family. Sunday Split, number four. Just above that, it was a tough choice, but just above that, I put my original small box version of Sushi Go. Sushi Go now comes in a much bigger tin, but I have the original version. I believe I got this on Indiegogo a long, long time ago. And... Uh, this is a wonderful set collection uh, card drafting game that's very easy to teach. Again, similar to Sunday Split, it, it looks great on the table, really cutesy art. Um, and uh, yeah, it packs up so small. It, it's just a wonderful little drafting game um, that's super easy to teach. I don't know, I'm repeating myself now. It's, it, you're finding a theme in all these, all these games. Easy to teach, easy to play, and I love that there's a drafting mechanism here, which can be, serve as a way of introducing people to other drafting games. I think Sushi Go is a, a great little game for a big gathering. That's number three. And number two, I had the game No Thanks. No Thanks uh, is a game that I have played in different environments at different times, sometimes with gamers when we're looking for a filler game. I played with family. Um, I played online on Board Game Arena. And I've really found that this is a, a great, this is a really great game for, for just teaching, um, for watching, if you're a spectator and you're watching. And it has a little bit of that poker feel to it but definitely not with a length of a full game of poker. So no thanks, you are bidding to not take a card, basically. There's a card that's gonna be revealed on the table, you are bidding not to take it. Um, and because every card that you gain gives you points at the end of the game. For example, you see this image on the box, the five, the 17, the, thir the 33 here. At the end of the game, if you had all these cards in your tableau, you would have a, a score of 55 or negative 55, however you want to say it. Um, if it's 55, you, you don't want the highest score. You want the lowest score, essentially. Um, and counting against that are the remaining chips that you have. So you're trying to only spend chips when you really need to. With the wonderful twist of this game being that sometimes you gain a card that is sequential to a card that you already have. So I have this 33. If the 32 comes out on the table and I end up getting it, I end up winning it, hopefully with a few chips on top of it from players who've said they don't want it, then instead of me scoring a 33, I will just score a 32. So it's kind of like I, it's made this 33 even better. I get to ignore it and I go down by one number. I, it's just, it's a, it's a really, really fun game to play in that environment. It doesn't take long. And I, I think my family is going to have a lot of fun with No Thanks this summer. So yeah, No Thanks at number two. And number one is a game that I, is tried and true. I definitely tried it with a variety of different groups. Not everyone even uh, enjoys the mind, but those who do, including myself, really have a lot of fun with it. It is a cooperative game that has this trick-taking feel to it, even though it's not a trick-taking game at all. But it's a cooperative game where you were simply trying to play cards in numerical order. In and not necessarily sequential, but in numerical order order so each player and again it's also a game that ramps up so in the first round each player has one card you were simply trying to cooperatively play those cards in order without communicating anything to those players other than how long you take to actually play the card um, so we win say if we're playing a three-player game if i have a one you have a five someone else has a 33 if i play the one first you play the five next that player has a 33 we win that round we move on to the next round where we each have two cards and then three cards so it ramps up really well making it easy to teach and also adds this feeling of, of tension and anticipation and progression to the game because we're getting better and better as we play learning each other's kind of uh chronological cues essentially 
um, and I just had a great time. There are many games that probably could have taken this this top slot on the list, but I have played the the mind various times with these types of groups, and it's always gone over really, really well. So that's why I put it at number one on this list. These are all the games. I mean, I love that all these games. I can probably hold them. Up. I'll try to hold them up to the camera here because they don't take up a lot of space, and so. I will probably be able to pack all of these in my suitcase this summer. Let's see how much space that is. So I think this little space. Um, having a smaller box doesn't mean that they're a better game than a larger game, but for this type of travel, for air travel, uh, I think they they fill that niche really, really well. Um, yeah, so these are my, my 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 small box games, my favorite small box games that I'm gonna, going to bring bring to some big gatherings this year. And I'd love to hear what your thoughts are, are on these games or other small box games that you really enjoy that you plan on traveling with this summer to some bigger gatherings or smaller gatherings, either way. Let me know in the comments below. Thanks.